I'm going to talk about uh, some of the recent changes to not just the names of, but also the, the definitions of brain tumors. Um, so every several years, there's an updated classification that comes out from the World Health Organization. And there's a classification system that really started in 2021. The online textbook didn't really come out until 2022. I'll talk about that because it has implications for um, the work that I do. So we'll talk about the classification system. We'll talk about some of the new tumor types uh, that have been defined in this new classification system. We'll talk about tumor types that have been renamed or reshuffled um, and updated. I do not have any relevant disclosures. So first of all, I want to go over some definitions because it's important to what I will be talking about. Please, uh, if you have questions along the way, put them in the question and answer box, and I'm happy to interrupt my presentation to answer them. Um, first of all, the central nervous system, that refers to the brain and the spinal cord, as opposed to the nerves that are coming out uh, to the legs or the arms, for example. A brain tumor, as opposed to brain cancer, that refers to, uh, usually, we're talking about a low-grade tumor, meaning grade one or two, whereas brain, sorry, uh, grade one tumor versus brain cancer is usually grade two, three, or four. We grade our brain tumors. Uh, we don't tend to stage them. Staging refers to where a cancer has gone in the body because as you already heard, um, brain cancer tends to stay either within the brain or spinal cord. We really care what it looks like more under the microscope and what the molecular features are of the tumor. And so a grade is one, two, three, or four, where one is low grade and four is high grade. You'll hear me talk a lot about glial tumors and gliomas that refers to the cells that help sustain neurons. And so when you have a tumor, which is unchecked growth in those sustaining cells, that's called a glioma. A low grade glioma is generally considered to be a grade one or grade two brain tumor, whereas a high grade glioma tends to be a grade three or grade four. So this is summary. Um, I'll point out again, brain tumor versus brain cancer. Uh, all brain cancers are tumors, but not all brain tumors are cancers. Um, so let's move on. Classification systems really uh, didn't become codified until the World Health Organization took that on. Before that, there were famous surgeons such as Harvey Cushing, who would try to classify tumors based on what they look like under a microscope. And so we're, uh, we're sort of standing on the the shoulders of those giants who started those classifications. And then the WHO's first edition of their classification system came out in 1979. Along the way, there have been many changes. Uh, I was trained really with the 2016 classification um, to a lesser degree, the 2007 classification. In 2016, that was the first time that we really started integrating molecular results into tumor definitions. So the pathologists, the ones who look at the microscope and, and look at the tumor under the microscope, they no longer have the final word. And so those pathologists then have to send some tumors off for testing of the genes within the tumors. And those results can sometimes trump what they see under the microscope. And, and that's never been more relevant than in the 2021 edition, where molecular features of tumors can often trump what's seen under the microscope or what's called histology. And so I'll refer to the latest edition as WHO CNS5. Um, in WHO CNS5, there's a, a few big categories or chapter titles. The first one is called gliomas, glioneuronal tumors and neuronal tumors. That captures a large majority of, uh, of tumors within the brain. Uh, but not all of them. In fact, the, the most common brain tumors are actually meningioma, pituitary tumors, followed by glial tumors. And some of the tricky parts of um, determining which tumors are most common is that not all tumors end up going under uh, undergoing surgery. And so it's hard to, to really count these things properly. If they're only found on a brain scan, we don't have uh, proper records of the pathology. I'll talk more about the gliomas, the 
glioneuronal tumors and neuronal tumors. They classify those into adult type diffuse gliomas. And there's three categories here. The first is astrocytoma IDH mutant. The second is oligodendroglioma IDH mutant and 1P19Q co-deleted. The last is glioblastoma IDH wild type. This is quite a change from the 2016 edition. I will go into that in some detail, but first I'll talk about some of these markers. IDH, it's called isocitrate dehydrogenase. This is a marker that's seen in some tumors. It tends to indicate that it's a slower growing tumor. It's usually been there for several years as opposed to several months. And it's a hallmark of astrocytomas and oligodendrogliomas. Um, importantly, in this new definition, if you do not have an IDH mutation, you no longer have an astrocytoma. Similarly, if you do not have an IDH mutation, you no longer have an oligodendroglioma, and you'll have to fit into another category somewhere. So this means a lot of people who have been told that they've had an astrocytoma um, actually, under the new classification system, no longer do. There's also an important classification, which is pediatric type diffuse low-grade gliomas. We're recognizing those as being more and more common, but they're, they're tricky to diagnose and they require specialized molecular testing. And then there's similarly pediatric type diffuse high-grade gliomas. There's a few other rare tumors uh, that are listed here. So now to the, the meat of the talk, which is talking about uh, new diagnoses in WHO CNS5. So there's a type of pediatric low-grade glioma called a diffuse astrocytoma, MYB or MYBL altered. This is a rare tumor that's very slow growing. Um, and if we can recognize that a patient has this tumor, then probably other than surgery, they don't need any other treatments. So it's important to learn to recognize these tumors and test for them because if somebody has them, then we should leave them alone and just monitor. There's another tumor type called a plenty. You can see the long name for it there. Again, if you have this, that's a good thing, um, but we need to be able to recognize who has this and not treat them as if they have a high-grade glioma because these tumors are very slow growing and just need to be watched. Um, there's tumor types with MAP kinase pathway alterations. These are tumor types that we now have special treatments, a special targeted chemotherapy for these tumors. And so that's an exciting uh, time to be in the field where we're discovering new treatments that can slow down and reverse the growth of brain tumors. Uh, there's another tumor type, especially in, in children and young adults, uh, a type of high-grade glioma that probably historically was called a glioblastoma. There's something called a diffuse pediatric type high-grade glioma. It's similar to a glioblastoma, but not quite. And then there's infant type hemispheric gliomas. These tumors often have a special mutation uh, that can be, again, treated with targeted therapy. There's another tumor type, high-grade astrocytoma with pyeloid features. We don't have any specific treatments yet for this, but we know that it's a distinct entity. There's new glioneuronal tumors, um, myxoid glioneuronal tumors, multinodular invaculating neuronal tumors. The second one is important because it ought to be left alone. Uh, these tumors tend not to cause any problems. It's important to recognize them uh, and not touch them because they're very slow growing tumors. Within ependymomas, these are tumors of the lining on the fluid filled spaces in the brain. There's a few categories. Um, and we're not quite sure how to treat these differently at this point. They all used to just be called ependymomas, and now they've been subclassified by their type. Um, but they have different behavior, and probably they respond differently to therapies, and we're trying to learn exactly uh, what that means. Some other new tumors, there's a type of neuroblastoma. You can see number one there. Um, there's other types of tumors, including... Um, tumors that are cousins of medulloblastomas, but they happen in the front of the brain. There's other tumors uh, down below. These are very rare. We're still learning about them. Only you know, dozens of patients or handfuls of patients of these have ever been described so far. Here's an important section. What tumor types are no longer um, included in the WHO CNS5? There used to be... Um, well, we, we used to call tumors 
uh, IDH mutant glioblastoma, we now just rename the tumor. It doesn't change much, but what it does change is our interpretation of old evidence. So old clinical trials would have included patients with these IDH mutations because these tumor types are, um, are now renamed. Um, it's hard to know exactly how to treat these patients now, but we'll need to continue to integrate the evidence that has been collected with future evidence. So some people would have been told that they had a glioblastoma and according to WHO CNS5, they may be told that actually it's no longer considered a glioblastoma, it's a grade four astrocytoma. Similarly, we got rid of the word anaplastic and uh, all over uh, and the word diffuse generally. So instead of calling it an anaplastic astrocytoma, we use just use the grade. So astrocytoma grade three or grade two. Importantly, IDH wild type grade two and three, uh, diffuse astrocytoma and anaplastic astrocytomas no longer exist according to the new classification system. So what about all the people that were already diagnosed with them? Probably if you analyze their tumor in depth, you could reclassify them. Most people with IDH wild type anaplastic astrocytomas are likely to harbor glioblastomas, but some of them could be pediatric type high grade or low grade gliomas. Similarly for diffuse astrocytomas, but it's probably the other uh, direction. So most of them are pediatric type low grade gliomas, but some of them uh, are what we would call molecular glioblastomas. So again, where the molecular features of the tumor become more important than what the pathologist sees under the microscope. And then some other updates, they use Arabic numbering instead of Roman numerals for tumor grades. And that's just so that typos won't be uh, as big of a problem if in a pathology report. They just want to make sure that those, those are, are less common. Uh, grades are no longer determined by the tumor name. So like I said, we got rid of these words anaplastic and atypical, and we just use the grade number. And importantly, we're relying much more on molecular features instead of just uh, histology. So this means that more precise diagnoses can lead to better predictions of survival. Certain tumors have driver mutations that can be treated with specific medicines. Some tumors have a benign course that can simply be monitored and we can now recognize those tumors as such. Um, and we can identify some rare tumor entities, group them together uh, and research them so that we understand how better to treat them. But some of the problems with this new classification system is that it makes the older data harder to interpret if we're changing the definitions as we go. Initial tumor diagnosis might need to be revised once molecular analyses are available. So it means that these diagnoses might take longer to be available to patients. And it also means that both patients and clinicians need to stay up to date, which is frankly a lot of work. So I hope I've gone over uh, these items in the agenda and I wanna thank you and I'm happy to answer questions.